Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is just going to be me and of course some Caesar juice, which is my favorite orange and carrot juice from here. It's so good. Mm. Yeah. All right. I need a beverage while I'm going to talk because I'm going to be talking in this video. It's a sit down and talk video. I want to do a series of videos where I'm just talking about things that I know you guys would want to know about specifically pertaining to this travel journey because I do see a lot of comments, uh, people wondering, being my size, as big as I am, how did you travel to the Middle East? One of the hot, especially to one of the hottest places on the planet, Kuwait. If you've watched my channel, you've been with me for a while, you've seen my past videos, you've seen my life up until now. So especially somebody like me, it's very shocking for someone like me to do something like that. I just want to say that I think this is a lesson that I don't think that people really understand that what people show you online is just what they show you online. I don't think that people really understand fully everything that's going on inside of me. And that's, you're not meant to. <laughs> These are things that I keep personal in my life. Um, and there are, I have shared a lot of things with you guys. Yes, I have been very, very open. I'm going to be open to what I feel comfortable with being open with. So anyway, my point with all that was, um, I think that people don't really fully know me. They don't really know that I have this sense of burning desire to just sometimes experience life in a way I never thought that I would ever do it. And I, that's how I like to live my life, kind of spontaneously, just, you know, just crazy life. I love it. I love having a crazy life. All right. So this part one or episode one is going to be talking about my experience with the actual traveling as an uh, obese person or overweight person and uh, anything from the how I handled the heat, uh, the seats, and just all of the extra activity. Uh, basically, again, if you're kind of new here, uh, or just a reminder, I'm a person who has come from a very sedentary lifestyle. Uh, I'm from Canada and I not use, I don't, I'm not a person who loves the heat. I'm not a person who loves activity and all of those things that I have to do here. But I am a person who does love to challenge myself when I feel the time is right. I have done that in my past and I'll get into that now. So just a bit of a history with flying. Um, I know that flying fat is a huge topic for people who are overweight. It's a big anxiety. Traveling when you're overweight, uh, doing anything when you're uh, excessively overweight is extremely difficult uh, for a lot of people, including myself. And it makes traveling extra difficult, of course. I first went on an airplane when I was 10 and I was a pretty chubby kid, but I don't really remember the experience other than just my ears being blocked and my mom giving me chewing gum and, and insisting, 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 chew gum, chew gum, your ears won't pop. Sorry, I, I talk a lot with my hands, I know. I'm, I'm very, very happy and I really love this Arabian gold. <laughs> just putting that out there. Yes, I'm showing off my ring. <laughs> I was 10 and we were going to Florida to visit my grandfather who resides in Florida. And that's all I remember about the flight. I wasn't terribly nervous. Now, fast forward to about 2001, I had traveled around Canada in a program called Katimovic, which was funded by the Canadian government. At the time, they would pay for youth to get out of their house and experience Canada, do something different, do some volunteer work. So I, I would volunteer um, 40 hours a week actually um, in Katimovic. And I remember purposely pushing myself to do this. Uh, no one in my family believed that I would go for seven months, travel around Canada as a 17 year old uh, alone. Um, I was homesick at first. I do have some series on that on my channel and some videos, but um, that was the second time I had to use an airplane a couple of times. And it was a small plane. I remember that I was 200 pounds, I think approximately 200 pounds at the time. Now, I don't remember feeling much anxiety about flying or about the seatbelt or anything like that. Um, 200 pounds is still not terribly 
that's super obese to the point where you won't fit on a plane or you fear that you you won't fit in public transportation. And actually that brings me to my point where I, you don't actually worry about fitting anywhere until it actually happens. That dreadful, embarrassing moment. Sorry, I need some juice. The juice and the pickles here, top notch. So over the years, I, my weight increased, increased, increased over the years. And it got to the weight that it was, which was very excessive, um, especially for health and everything else like that. Um, you guys know I'm a person who's all about body positivity, loving who you are regardless of your shape, size, whatever. But um, when it comes to damaging your health, that's a bit uh, of a different issue for me. But regardless, I do still think that people, while they're dealing with their health issues, have a right to be comfortable and happy traveling and living life and not feeling like a complete outcast. But um, so uh, I did travel to Cuba. That was the first trip um, in April where I was feeling some anxiety. Okay, I'm going to say I was as terrified as I've probably been thinking about a flight. Uh, I was, you know, I would in preparation, I would like obsessively just look for seats that, you know, maybe a window seat, maybe at the back, no one will sit beside me. I was hoping, you know, am I going to have to buy two seats? Just all these anxieties were flooding in my brain. I'm going to, people were, you need two seats. You need two seats. Don't, don't, don't put yourself on someone else. Don't, you know, don't take up space. Don't take up space. No, I'm going to tell you, never be afraid to take up space, take up space. All right. Enough. However, um, when I got on the plane uh, for Cuba, the Sunwing plane, I did do a video on that, but it was just, that was my first experience. I think that broke the ice for me and I kind of expected all economy seats to be kind of similar standard size. Now, I'm an apple shape, so from the side, I'm more larger than wide like this. I don't have very wide hips, so I carry most of my weight in my abdomen, therefore, I was able to fit in the seat um, all right. It was a little snug, but it wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't digging in. Uh, however, I did need a seatbelt extender because the seatbelt was like coming like this. <laughs> you know, I needed that extra space. So I had the seatbelt extender and um, they were very nice. I just asked the flight attendant. Now, those are things that if you are embarrassed to do because people did look at me, like literally the plane was like already filling up and the the stewardess was kind of like busy a little bit and I had to just kind of like say hey can I have a seatbelt extender and everyone watched me ask her like everyone so and and that to me honestly I guess I'm just lucky I just don't place I've learned over the years I guess it's taken a bit of mental work I guess but I've just always just never really cared too much about what people think about me in public you guys know that. <laughs> so luckily for me, I was like, hey, like I'm the kind of person, let's just put it this way. I'm the kind of person that's like, no matter who I am, what size I am, what I look like, it's like, I will go anywhere in the world and be like, hey, here I am. This is how I am. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for it. So that's, that's how I dealt with the Sunwing situation. Um, now for this trip, uh, specifically, I flew with Qatar Airlines. I heard that it was a bit more comfortable. Uh, maybe the seats were a bit larger. So I just figure, you know what? I'll just ask for a seatbelt extender. It's a longer flight. But I thought, hey, I can do this. So I just have the attitude. I can do this. You can do this. You're going to do this. And I just do it. I don't know. I just do it. And um, maybe a part of it is just I'm kind of a bit of an adrenaline junkie a little bit where uh, in in a sense where I like to push myself and I find that even more now I'm loving pushing myself even more. So what I have to say about the 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 trip um, when I got to the Montreal airport the walking wasn't too bad. It wasn't too far I had to walk to the uh, check-in uh, with Qatar Airlines in the Montreal airport. Now leaving Canada was where all of the I need to walk everywhere happens and, and, and things just get more um, harder and hotter as, as I travel. So I got on the plane and my seat was like way at the back and I heard someone say in the, the stewardess say like, 
we have a full plane so I kind of like oh, looked at the sea beside me and I thought oh no 12 hours with somebody that I don't know and like maybe a strange person uh, I don't know so but I knew it was a possibility so but I had a window seat that was the best thing for me because I love looking out the window um and of course right at the back near the lavatory because I want to avoid just having to walk down long aisles through people um, maybe that is a little bit of an insecurity. I just, I don't know, but I just, yeah. Um, the lavatory, you're all wondering about the lavatory and the planes. Um, actually, it's actually big enough. Like the door, I thought the door was only this big, but it's actually, there's two doors like that and they fold in half. So you take the, the door and you just open it and it folds open and then you close it behind you. And actually the lavatories in the Qatar Airlines bathrooms are actually really nice. They have like air, uh, eau de toilette and everything. And they had like everything. And um, there was enough room. It was a little snug, but I actually had enough room to like stand up and move around and wash my hands and everything. So I was like, yes, okay. Um, so that was good. Um, I did actually get to check out the bathroom because that honestly, airplane bathrooms, this is again, just one thing if you're a bigger person, you'll understand airplane bathrooms are so tiny that yeah, it like freaked me out. I was like, oh my God, what if I get stuck? Or I don't know, it was just like all these irrational thoughts just poured into my brain. So, but because I was at the back near the lavatory, um, I actually got to talk to a lot of nice people because um, I actually made friends with a nice Iranian woman and she was waiting to use the bathroom. There was like a queue. People would queue near my seat and I would just talk to people. <laughs> so, yay. Bathroom beezing. So once I had my seatbelt extender in and once I heard that I was waiting, I was waiting nervously looking like, okay, look, the suspense. Is somebody going to come and sit in my seat? You know, everyone's moving down the aisles. And sure enough, um, finally the pilot was like um, all passengers on board and nobody was sitting beside me. So so I actually didn't purchase two seats. I, I never purchased two seats. I just, I'm okay with the seatbelt extender. And I actually um, had this seat to myself because it wasn't a full plane. So I was actually really lucky. I got to put my leg up and just rest. And I actually, one thing being bigger and especially in the abdomen area, um, I find is a problem on airplanes for me is the table tray. I'm not able to actually fully full, uh, fold down the tray in front of me it hits my stomach a little bit so what I did was I actually just used the tray from the the empty chair and just used that as my mealtime tray which was fine and the little toiletries kit they give you on the plane uh, I remember in my first vlog there was a little um, pouch with a whole bunch of things in it and I didn't really uh, know at the time what it was so they give you like a toothbrush toothpaste they give you a pair of socks they give you um, a blanket which is in like a plastic wrapping so a brand new blanket I actually kept it as a souvenir why not and I kept the socks um, they give you some headphones they give you a mask and some earplugs so because there was a screaming child on board the whole time <laughs> so I actually the earplugs once I put the mask on I just like I like I showed you in my video I actually did doze off even without my CPAP that's a problem because I do use a CPAP machine that uh, I couldn't plug that in um, but I didn't really need it. I was able to just doze in and off and I knew that once I got to my destination I would be able to sleep. I was tired though um, arriving at the uh, Hamad International Airport. You have to look this airport up if you don't believe me. So I walked around the airport for a long time until I finally found somebody, like it was a connecting flight, until I finally found somebody uh, who looked up, who scanned my ticket and looked up which gate I needed to go to. And they were like, you need to go to gate C, I think C39 or something like that. Anyway, so then I was like, where is that? Is it far? And she's like, oh yes, miss, it's too far. You're going to need a train. So you need to go stand. There's a little location where you stand. If your gate is really far off, you need to take this train. So, or this little cart. So this guy kept uh, this guy picked us all up and um, was bringing us to the gate and the whole way he was like, excuse me. That's why I kept putting it in my video because the whole way, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, almost running people over and just speeding across the airport. Um, hugest airport I've ever seen in my life. It's huge, huge. I think it was uh, rated the number one airport in the world right now, but it is 
I underestimated how large it is. It's bad. <laughs> so I was um, actually very thankful for that because I was actually really tired and it would have been a heck of a hike with my luggage. So I just, uh, yeah, they, they dropped me off at my gate and then I had to wait for a bit and took the connecting flight into uh, Kuwait. So when I got off the plane in Kuwait, I had to, um, I, it was, it was just, it was so hot. It was so hot that even just being in the air conditioned airport, I could feel like myself starting to sweat a bit. And then I had to walk around. I was really tired. This was, um, I was getting really tired at this point and I just, it was a kind of crabby and, um, not hungry cause we were well fed on the planes. Um, with snacks, even on the connecting flight, even just an hour, they gave us a snack and some juice. So I was okay there, but oh my gosh, when I got to, when I got to Kuwait, I just wanted to get in the car, air conditioning and, and, you know, get to my destination. And, um, I just, it was so hot. Like just, just the few seconds I was outside, it was so hot. It hasn't been super hot since then. It's been in the twenties, so it's not too bad. But that one day I arrived, yeah, it was really hot. Um, I was sweating buckets, buckets of sweat. <laughs> I was sweating a lot, lot, lot. It's a complete new environment for me and everything like that. So I just wanted to share a little bit of, with you about my experience traveling here. I know a lot of you have questions uh, and I hope I answered some of them for you. So in closing, I guess I can say, I just, yeah, it was hot and hard to do. It was hard to do to travel um, being so overweight, but it was worth it. And it, I challenged myself to do it. And I feel better having come out the other side. And furthermore, I really, really appreciate you guys coming along on this journey with me. So I thank you for watching my videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.